The original Sony A7R was released in 2013 and it marks the beginning of the full frame mirrorless revolution. Almost 10 years later, we now have the Sony A7R5, feature packed with the latest technology and autofocus. But what about image quality? Has it pretty much stayed the same for almost an entire decade? Well, let's go back to 2013 where it all started. In 2013, Sony released the Sony A7 and A7R. The R cost 2300 body only. It was the world's first full frame mirrorless interchangeable lens camera. It didn't have IBIS. It didn't have an electronic shutter. It didn't have phase detection autofocus. But what it did have was a kick ass 36 megapixel sensor packed into a small glossy fingerprint magnet, full magnesium alloy body with a shutter sound that could wake up your neighbors. Even though it was slow and clunky to use and it looked like a toy to many professionals at the time, it was innovative. And we all know how that turned out for Sony. In 2013, there was only one other high res camera in direct competition. And that was the Nikon D800 that sported the same 36 megapixel sensor. Back when, you know, Nikon was at the top. But at 36 megapixels, the Nikon D800 stands head and shoulders above all the other DSLRs when it comes to full frame high resolution. Two years later in 2015, Sony introduced the Sony A7R2 that was priced at 3200 body only with the new BSI 42 megapixel sensor, 399 phase detection autofocusing points with continuous eye autofocus, which was huge. In my opinion, this was the biggest leap in sensor technology as it pertains to photo and video quality and even autofocus than any other R camera in the line. But of course, that's debatable. In 2017, Sony introduced the A7R3 at 3200 body only. I was in New York for that launch. It was, it was huge. It reused the same 42 megapixel BSI sensor. It added 10 frames per second shooting. It added IBIS, bigger battery. It had the same AF system, but it had made a significant improvement over the R2, especially with the eye autofocus. In 2018, the A7R4 was announced with the new 61 megapixel sensor priced at $3,500 body only, new 567 phase autofocus system with real time tracking for photo and video. I was also there for the launch. And now in 2022, we have the Sony A7R5 at $3,900 body only with the same sensor as the A7R4, AI autofocus, better IBIS, 8K video, 10-bit video, and we got this new four-way swivel screen. My unpopular opinion, I think the AI autofocus is a nice improvement in this camera, but the autofocus was already great. The four-way swivel screen is probably its biggest innovation, in my opinion. Camera technology has come a long way, but there are some things that just haven't progressed as much as you think they would have. And one of those things is image quality. The original A7R had about 14 stops of dynamic range. The new Sony A7R5 has about 15 stops. For this test, since I can't open up the raw files on the A7R5 yet, I used the 50 megapixel Sony A1 instead, since it has one of the latest full frame sensors in it with very similar performance in my opinion. So I took some photos of my car in very harsh sunlight to see how far I could push the files. I even did a portrait shoot so that I could pixel peep the files and see how well they match up when it came to skin tones and color. After tugging and pulling at the highlights and shadows and playing with the colors, going through my whole workflow, I did see a small improvement when shooting at ISO 100. Sharpness was better on the Sony A1 and it maintained slightly cleaner shadows as I pushed them, but I was able to recover the same amount of detail in each photo for the most part. For portrait, this is when I noticed even less of a difference when it came to the quality. Other than missing focus from time to time with the A7R, we'll talk about autofocus later, you could truly put these files side by side and I would not be able to tell the difference. The only time I noticed a major improvement was when I did a low light test and the newer Sony A1 sensor you know, it crushed the A7R and it wasn't even close. This was not surprising to me. That's one of the advantages of having a BSI sensor. And that's why I believe personally that the biggest, the largest jump in sensor 
technology, when we're talking about quality and not readout speed, was back in 2015 when the A7R2 went with the 42 megapixel BSI sensor. You know what's crazy to me is how some of us can justify upgrading cameras every two to three years. I say some of us, but mostly me, thinking that we're getting a better, newer sensor that has to be superior in image quality in some way, right? But at the end of the day, this test has proven, at least to me, that the difference in image quality has, is negligible with these Sony sensors, especially since the release of the Sony a7R II. And that just goes to show how important having good glass really is when trying to achieve the best image quality possible. Now, I can't say the same for Canon. However, since they make their own sensors, I did own the 5D Mark III, and I have used the Canon RP. The dynamic range just wasn't there. And the newer sensors, like the one in the R5, far superior. And in my opinion, it currently matches up neck to neck with Sony sensors. So on the Canon end, on the Canon side, I do think that there was progression, a pretty big progression in image quality when compared to the Fidey Mark III in 2013. Another thing that hasn't improved much over time is the LCD screen quality. The original a7R had a 921,000 dot screen. The a7R5 has a 2.1 million dot screen. And although this is the new four-way tilting swiveling screen, this is the best screen mechanism that design that I've ever seen in a camera. The quality of it is still subpar. What doesn't make sense to me is Sony makes smartphones with some really high quality screens. I mean, industry leading screens, but Canon has managed to put better screens in their cameras ever since the 5D Mark III. The screens on the Canon cameras, or even the Nikon ones, are just more crisp and colorful, and it makes a big difference when you're showing someone an image that you just took of them. It makes a big difference. I hope that they can make an effort to improving the quality of the screens in upcoming cameras. One of my one of the biggest on my wish list right now. The OG A7R came with a technology that would make sharing photos from your camera directly to your smartphone easy and fast, NFC. But let's be honest, the camera to smartphone sharing process just wasn't there, still isn't there. One of the most frustrating things about modern cameras. So what are some of the things that have improved a lot over the last nine years? The video capabilities of these cameras has taken some pretty big leaps ever since the OG A7R with its 1080p AVC HD files. Since the A7S line was launched in 2014, most A7R cameras tapped out at 4K30 for most generations. But this year with the A7R5, not only do you get 4K60, but more importantly, you get access to 10-bit video, which makes all of the difference when you're color grading, when you're shooting log, when you're shooting professionally. It's huge. Another feature that has seen huge improvements over time is the autofocus. The A7R had a whopping 25-point contrast detection system. It did have face detection, it also had smile detection but it was so inaccurate. There was no joystick on the back to switch your focusing point. You would have to hit a custom button and then use the wheel in the back, spin it, or use the front and rear dials to move your focusing point. A headache. It was the same thing with the A7R2 for those that had it. It was one of the biggest improvements with the A7R3 when we got the joystick. It's the little things, right? The A7R5 now has a 693 point autofocusing system. It has an AI-based autofocus using deep learning with its own dedicated chip. It can identify and track multiple kinds of subjects, and it has human pose estimation where it's able to recognize different parts of the body and track a person when their eyes are not visible. Autofocus is one of the few features that has consistently gotten better for every A7R launch. Ergonomics have also gotten much better. Back then, everyone wanted smaller and lighter. Smaller and lighter was the thing. 
and now the A7R5 with its new four-way screen, it now is the largest A7R body to date. But with its larger size, it fits in the hand much better. You get a much larger EVF. In the A7R, you get a 2.3 million dot. On the A7R5, you have a 9.4 million dot. Better battery life, better controls, and so much more. I could be here 20 minutes talking about every single thing. If you are someone that doesn't like how big these cameras have gotten, um, I think that the A7R 3 is the sweet spot in the A7R line. You get the smaller form factor with the larger batteries. You got still that amazing sensor that has, it's completely, it'll match up against anything else out there right now. It's got great autofocus and still just an all around great camera. The speed of these cameras and how much information they can process has gotten so great over time. I mean, look at the Sony A1 that can shoot 50 megapixels at 30 frames per second with very good rolling shutter performance. Only because now Sony has a, a line of cameras dedicated to speed, they haven't upgraded the speed of the A7R line that much. And if anything, have crippled it even more with the A7R5 that can shoot only seven frames per second electronic, but can still do 10 frames per second mechanical that like the last three R's could pull off. In my conclusion, I think image quality improvement overall has stagnated across all brands for at least the past three to four years. I personally believe the next phase of center innovation technology is gonna come with improving the low light capabilities and possibly making stacked BSI sensors more affordable and more common in mid-tier cameras like, like the a7 IV. I also think that we will see more deep learning and AI being implemented to make cameras even more powerful. But then that begs the question, like, is all of this technology making the process of photography more sterile and less engaging? Well, that's a topic for another video. But if you enjoyed it, please show this video some love. It's free. I worked really hard on it. I appreciate you for making it up to this point and uh, I'll holla at you later.